you're gonna think that I'm obsessed with size. Don't worry, it's a French thing. We always uh, very worried about the, the length. Uh, I just associate my, my mentor, Professor Sharon, he is here with this, uh, with this topic. He gave me the opportunity to talk here. And I want to thank uh, 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 Joachim Feilt for inviting us. He's a big friend of our department and coming very often in Toulouse for our HIP, uh, HIP meeting. We organize every three years. So um, the question of size is always addressed about um, regarding the risk of dislocation. And indeed, it's a very important thing. But size in, is not the only problem. Actually, there are many uh, reasons for your hip to be unstable. I would separate this as intrinsic factors and extrinsic factors. Obesity, soft tissue impeachment, bone impeachment have been very well described. We know that obese patients, for example, have a risk because of the, <coughs> um, the, the contact between the two legs. Intrinsic uh, factors are related to the surgery itself and what we're doing uh, in the OR. Implant positioning have been shown to, to be very important regarding the curve positioning, uh, inclination and intervention. The curb stand and uh, combined antiversion is very important as well. Our topic today is uh, head size. Um, head size is very important because it allows us to avoid two um, uh, um, dislocation, risk of dislocation, by th two ways. Uh, avoiding the cam effect, and we have here three um, um, pictures showing how it, we can avoid uh, the, this cam effect uh, increasing the head size. But more impo importantly, that the head size might be the head-neck ratio. So if you keep a big head, but you have still a very large, uh, a very large neck, might be a risk of early cam impediment. We might not result in dislocation, but might result in limitation of the range of motion. So we certainly have to increase size, uh, head size, but up to which, side, which size we're going to discuss this. A second way uh, head size is uh, impacting the dislocation and, the, and, the, and the, uh, the stability of the hip is by increasing the jab distance. You all know this fact, as the uh, head diameter increasing, you, um, um, you, you increase the, the distance that the ball has to reach to get out of the socket. This is a very known uh, fact, and it has been um, evaluated by many, many, many publications that uh, a 22 millimeters head is more at risk of dislocation than 28 and uh, 32. The question is, um, does it depend on other, other factors? The discussion we had about uh, um, approaches earlier is um, also addressed very well in the literature. We know that head size um, dislocate more regardless the, 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 the approach. Again, the bias we described earlier about the approach is due to the fact that uh, small approach uh, and uh, muscle sparing approach might uh, lead to a more uh, stable um, uh, joint. The risk of provision has been addressed as well, but if we look at the Australian registry, we know that the very large head are, are more stable, but it, difficult so far to tell that this or this mobile bearing is very uh, important and impact a lot the risk of dislocation, despite metal on uh, cross-link polyethylene seems to be <coughs> higher risk of dislocation. So. I, there are many evidence to show that we have to increase the head size, but up to which size? This is highly debated, because if everywhere in the room now would try to increase a little bit to 32, 36, we have this trend all across the Anglo-Saxon countries to go to 38, 40, 40 and more. Uh, we have been... Uh, um, capable of increasing this uh, due to the progress we made in, in, um, in, the, in, the, in the industry and the, the, the metal we use and the ceramic we use. But we have this paradoxical effect that if you increase after 36, you increase the offset of the ball. And as uh, the cup still the same, actually you make the offset in increasing, uh, reducing paradoxically the jump distance. And so, we're not sure that at some point we're not, de de we're not beneficial for the patient. 
So now we said that we have to increase the, the side head up to 36, 32, 36. What are the options? The options are ceramic on crosslink, mobile, uh, metal on crosslink poly, ceramic on ceramic. We have to talk about dual mobility. I'm French. I have to. And we're going to uh, make a very precise point on the cup side to see how this can impact our uh, practice. So to start with the ceramic head, uh, I would say it's very demanding. Um, it has been a very large trend all over the world, but we, have, we had some issues regarding especially the edge loading. I think that um, most of the industry now do very well regarding the head the heads, and we don't have this ri high risk of breakage that we have seen in the last decades. But now the hedge loading is still a problem, especially because if we try to increase the head size, we're creating a very hard and, 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 and strong uh, um, um, f force on the edge of, the, of, the, of the, um, the implant. And then we create a catastrophic thing, because to revise this patient is a very problematic uh, question. So it might be an option of pre-assembled cup, and it has been raising in the, in the market uh, in the last decades, and it seems to be pretty uh, interesting. However, a very important um, and, and difficult thing to address and to tell the patient in the risk of squeaking. I won't go into this debate so f too far because actually you have different schools and uh, some people said, no, no, no it's uh, minus 1% and some say it's up to 20, 50% we can find in the literature. But still, it's a risk that our patient can complain about. But if we don't choose the ceramic head, then we can go into something between um, a ceramic head with a, a cross -link, highly crosslink poly or metal with a crosslink poly. Um, because the very um, uh, prob big problem with larger heads is that we increase the risk of wear of the polyethylene. Um, it's still debated because we changed the quality of our polyethylene. And if we see that um, the results as at three years with the modern um, type of polyethylene uh, of the same results, then uh, uh, regardless of the size head, it's still a problem. And I've been revising this patient um, um, one week ago. And actually, when you, th when you see that the polyethylene is out, the cup is out, and actually it's a mess, you have a 3B Paprosky revision to make, you think, OK, maybe if we had at this time the option to choose something different, it would have been more uh, easy for me in the OR uh, 20 years after. So I have to talk then about dual mobility. Because if you want to increase the head size and you you if you want something stable, maybe you have to think about a new design. When I say new, it's not totally new. You might be aware that uh, in France, it has the first publication about dual mobility is 1973. But we have not so far been able to publish too much evidence, or I would say too much high evidence. Uh, actually, um, Today, in France, more, more of 40% of the revision are made with dual mobility. It's difficult to me to advocate for the large use of it, and I know it's not very popular in, the, in, in Germany, but maybe we, we can choose the patient at risk. And the risk, we know them. Obesity, large obesity, age, female gender, the muscle problem and sufficiency, and the problem, or obvious problem of, of stability with the, the, the pro neurological problem, sorry, and the uh, hypermobility patients. Um, to um, evaluate this, I performed the, this study uh, last year, um, and we, we are going to be published uh, very uh, soon. We wanted to evaluate the risk of dislocation uh, when we're using um, a dual mobility in the literature. Because as I said, there are plenty of publications. Most of them are uh, level four evidence uh, studies. So it's not high quality um, uh, publications. So we focused on only uh, the, the, the only comparative studies and we um, evaluate this. So actually I was very surprised and actually I was um, shameful uh, when I was talking to my boss at Mayo because we French weren't able to publish more than uh, four studies 
and all the rest of the studies have been published by American uh, uh, teams because it has been FDA approved in nine, um, 2009, so very, uh, very um, uh, recently. And actually, they did uh, a large number of publications. And what we see that we don't have any randomized control trials. And we were uh, pretty happy seeing that it works on in instability. The in primary uh, total hip arthroplasty, we uh, improved the dislocation uh, rate by five, and it was significant. The revision for all calls was uh, uh, not, um, not significant, however. In revision, the dislocation rate is divided by 3.6, and the revision all cause is uh, divided by 2.5, and this was also significant. On the survivorship, this was the most important point of the, of the study, is that regarding the small sample, okay, it's only uh, 1,500 uh, hips implanted, but we've shown that on primary, we have an increase on survivorship compared to standard mobile bearing. This is a bit concerning because I was able to explain why we have a reduction of dislocation, but survivorship, I think we need a lot more uh, investigation on this because if this is the case, my dual mobility might be a very good option for many of our patients. So I talked about increasing the height size, uh, the possibility of dual mobility, but now we have still to think about the cap because if you um, increase the head size, maybe at some point you won't have enough polyethylene. And if we see some of the implants recently uh, put on the market, it's really Anglo-Saxon way to put very large um, metal back, then you have a very thin poly. And if, if you have a too thin poly, maybe you uh, go back uh, 20 years before and expose yourself to wear again despite the, uh, the, uh, the in vitro studies we, we, we can see. So, yes, we still uh, need something behind the cup because it, in our opinion, it can prevent deform deformation of the insert. We have used a lot of uh, um, RM from Mathis with, and we were very happy to, to, to do so um, and because it allows uh, bone integration. Um, and also that because uh, where has been shown to, to be related with, with the presence of metal back, uh, this has been published in GBGS uh, 2004. So now two options. Uh, or we increase head size and we have the risk of dislocation, or we decrease uh, PE thickness and we have the risk of, of, uh, of wear. Why we, we are obsessed with that is because some of the patients, especially women, might have very small acetabuli. And if uh, you think about the security minimum uh, thickness of the polyethylene, it might be around seven. It's very debated on the, on, the, uh, on, on the literature. Some argue that we can go down to three, four. Uh, we are very um, careful with that, and we don't want to, to expose our patient to this kind of risk. So if you have a thickness of the metal back, which is three millimeters, then you need a seven millimeters security thickness. You can you are able to to put a 32 millimeters head uh, only when you start a 52 uh, millimeters cap. Same thing for a 36 head um, starting at a 56 uh, um, cap. Sorry. So you can think about different possibility. Maybe to go on full polyethylene and then you ex you have to cement this. It has been done a lot of time in the literature, and then you are able to go down for a 32 uh, millimeters cup uh, from a, a 46 millim millimeters um, uh, cup. However, the cement is very demanding, and when you don't do something very often, you're bad at it. We don't have the, the Anglo-Saxon uh, culture, uh, and so we expose yourself as different uh, complications. So a thick polyethylene included in a thin metal bag, that's why we're trying to do uh, sometimes with the RM or different uh, implant that we have in the, in the department here. So we have the, a good press fit, no deformity, and a similar germ distance than other um, um, uh, caps. And you st can start at 32 millimeters head from a 48 millimeters, millimeters cap. So uh, to finish uh, with this, I would say so that size is stability and it still matters uh, uh, and it's very important. 
we might uh, reach an optimal size between 32 and 36 millimeters uh, head. But you always have to think about other risk factors. I talked about extrinsic risk factor of dislocation. So piece thickness is important for smaller acet acetabuli, and dual mobility might be an option for some obvious uh, patient with high risk of dislocation. Sorry to have uh, been long, and thank you very much.